Welcome back to Buy or Sell, the series where you pitch me your predictions and I either buy or sell them and explain why. If you want to submit your own idea, leave a comment below starting with Buy or Sell and I'll consider it for a future video. So let's get to it. This is Buy or Sell, Episode 8. We'll start with Guy With No Vowels. The fifth largest city in America, Phoenix, will have a notable amusement park within 10 years. We are seeing a new park open next year in Glendale, which is pretty close to Phoenix. This is Mattel Adventure Park. Would you call this a significant and notable amusement park? For argument's sake, let's say no. I'm selling this. They have castles and coasters. I was just able to visit that for the first time. And aside from the arcade, that whole park is outdoors, which is kind of crazy. The Mattel Park also looks to be mostly inside, just based on the renderings, with the coasters and the go-karts and the train going outside. It's just way too hot in Phoenix in the summer. It was well over 110 degrees when I was there last. We could see an Adventure Dome type thing, or maybe a Nickelodeon universe, but that's as big as it's gonna get. Pigeon on Bread. Kennywood owners sue SNS for all the downtime on Steel Curtain and never work with them again. I'm buying this. We see parks hold a grudge against manufacturers all the time. And with all the problems Kennywood has had with Steel Curtain, I don't know why they would want to go back and work with SNS again. There are so many options out there. There is no need to go back to a manufacturer that's given you a headache. As for suing SNS, that would not surprise me at all. These rides are major investments, and if they think shoddy work or shoddy design has cost them money, they're gonna try and recover it. I don't know if it'll work. I know Knott's tried to sue Togo and failed, but they might try. Average Enthusiast After four or five surf coasters are built, the hype will wear off and nobody else will buy one. I'm buying this. I said it in a previous episode. The surf coaster looks to be similar to other cheaper models already out there. Maybe the surf coaster will have better capacity. Maybe it'll have better uptime than other launch coasters. But how many parks will want to pay more for the B&M when they can get something cheaper from, say, Vacoma? I'm not sure if the mock rides coasters would be cheaper or not. I may be wrong. Maybe the surf coaster is the next big time B&M model, but I'm skeptical. Dr. Puffin. Michigan's Adventure will get a relocated coaster from California's Great America. I'm selling this. I know when Giaga Lake closed, they were able to get their smaller parks some new coasters. But with Great America, I don't think there will be much to go around. Aside from Railblazer, Psycho Mouse, and the Kitty Coaster, I'd be surprised to see anything else find a new home in the chain. Railblazer would be a great fit here, but I would bet against it ending up in Michigan. I predicted this would go to King's Dominion, but Valley Fair, Dorney Park, Worlds of Fun, maybe even Carowinds might be in the running. Given their options, would they really choose Michigan's adventure? I say, no way. Puppy 7B. A new manufacturer of rides will open within the next decade. I'm buying this. We see manufacturers pop up all the time. Sometimes people from existing companies split off and form their own company. That's how we got B&M, CCI, GCI, and the Gravity Group. Juvenola, RMC, and Skyline were doing work for other manufacturers before splitting off. It seems almost inevitable that we'll see someone new emerge over the next 10 years. Oakview Films. Magic Mountain will either retire Viper or Ninja by 2030. I'm buying this. We got eight years left for this to happen, and we have two very old era coasters here. Through all the ups and downs of the Six Flags chain, through all the turnover and management, Magic Mountain is still getting a new coaster every few years. Over the next eight years, they may see declining popularity, increased maintenance costs, and the opportunity to use the land for something new. This is more true for Viper than Ninja, which is built on the side of a hill. They may also feel better axing one of these rides if they have a new one opening somewhere else in the park. I may be wrong, but it's believable. The 8-Bit Nerd. Valley Fair will eventually get a hand-me-down from California's Great America. I'm selling this. Basically the same reason I sold Michigan's Adventure. It would be an amazing, perfect fit for Flight Deck to come to Valley Fair, but I just think it's too old to justify moving it. Plus, it was built for that terrain, so it wouldn't be a very easy cut-and-paste coaster. So really, will Valley Fair get Railblazer? And even though I think that's more likely than Michigan's Adventure, I wouldn't bet on it. Entity. Kings Island will get an inversion machine or a launch coaster by 2024. At first, I was going to buy this, but now that I think about it, I have to sell. You gotta be skeptical when it comes to Cedar Fair and new coasters. They seem to be on a very consistent timeline when it came to their big parks getting new coasters. Then COVID happened and they took a hit. Kings Island is one of Cedar Fair's big four parks, and when you look at it alongside Cedar Point, Carowinds, and Canada's Wonderland, Kings Island is the park that has the most recent coaster, that being Orion in 2020. I think their original timeline would have seen a new coaster by 2024, probably a launch looper. But to believe that would be to believe that Cedar Point, Carowinds, and Canada's Wonderland are all going to get coasters first. I can't see that happening. I think their whole timeline got pushed back, and understandably so. Draven. Cedar Point replaces Top Thrill Dragster's Hydraulic Launch with a compressed air launch by SNS. I'm selling this. 
if they thought they had problems with the hydraulic launch. They're opening a new can of worms with the air launch. The only option I see if they want to change a launch is to make it an LSM. Can an LSM launch make it all the way up that tower? I don't think so. Maybe they would need to include LSMs on the top hat also. I really don't think Cedar Fair even knows what to do yet, but an air launch really isn't an option. Official coaster couple, Disneyland or California Adventure gets a new coaster by 2030. It's hard to believe they haven't added a new coaster since California Adventure opened in 2001. Disneyland hasn't seen anything new since 1993. Now look at Disney World. Magic Kingdom is building one this year. Epcot just got their first one. Hollywood Studios got one in 2018. Animal Kingdom in 2006. Anaheim just doesn't get coasters. This may be due to space. They are grossly short on space in that whole complex, a mistake that Walt Disney was able to avoid in Florida. It's also in a residential area and noise is a factor. So the question is, they've gone 21 years without a coaster. Will they go another eight? I think they will, so I'm selling this. They have done very well with dark rides, interactive rides, new themed areas, and with the space and noise problems, they'll stick with their high-priced non-coaster family rides. I can't complain, these are amazing. Indiana Pats fan. The polar coaster concept will never be constructed anywhere. I'm buying this, but I had to think about it. It's been talked about forever. It's been planned and scrapped, and maybe the world has passed it by. The polar coaster is very gimmicky. It wouldn't be cheap to build. It wouldn't give the best ride. All of that points to it never happening. But if it can be sold as a 500-foot coaster with a big, imposing tower that can be seen for miles, that's very marketable. It also would take a very small footprint and can't be built by anyone. Hotels, racetracks, or maybe even a standalone attraction, just like a mountain coaster. All that being said, I am buying this, just with very little confidence. Jake Church. If removed, Top Thrill Dragster will be replaced by a B&M on his plot of land. I'm selling this. I think if Cedar Point were to remove Dragster, they would put something spectacular on that plot. Well, either spectacular or gimmicky. B&M doesn't have anything like that that Cedar Point needs. Maybe a 200-foot flying coaster. That's the only thing I can imagine. I would bet on something like a 15-inversion Gerslauer or an RMC single rail standing 400 or 500 feet. I still don't think they're going to take it out, but this question only addresses if they did. Pigs are my friends one. Vacoma new generation coasters will blow up in America. I'm buying this and I think it's already happening. We haven't seen one of the great looking launch coasters come yet, but it seems like we're working up to it. They have the new Disney projects, but that's a little different. Disney and Vacoma go way back. But aside from that, they started putting in family suspended coasters. Then we heard about a tilt coaster coming to Coda Land, and now Dollywood is getting a new family multi-launch coaster. It may be a trickle right now, but within a year or two, I bet we see multiple major projects from Vacoma. Polar Workshop. Silver Dollar City will get a Vacoma STC as their new coaster. This is very specific, so I wouldn't call this likely to happen, but I'm willing to buy it. Pershing just bought a Vacoma for Dollywood. Silver Dollar City could use a coaster under the track. It seems like a perfect fit for their lineup, and Vacoma seems like the most likely manufacturer. I could also see a Vacoma flyer here, or maybe they go off the board and work with B&M again. There are so many possibilities for Silver Dollar City. Alyssa Campos, Six Flags Discovery Kingdom gets rid of the flash by 2026. I'm buying this. I think this was extremely likely before it got rethemed and repainted, but apparently it's still not open very much even after its facelift. Maybe they let a few more years pass. That'll justify the expense of the retheme, and in the next four years, they send this Frankenstein of a coaster to the scrapyard. I'd say, get your rides in while you still can, but don't count on it being open when you get there. Benjamin Friedman, we will eventually see a Giga Woody. I'm selling this. Even with RMC using steel to reinforce our lift hills, we're going to see fewer and fewer wooden coasters being built. I think RMC is done with their topper track model. There will still be a market for GCIs and gravity groups, even though GCI may move to making mostly Titan track coasters. I just don't see anyone even attempting a hyper wooden coaster, let alone a giga wooden coaster. Bra E 2.0. Canada's Wonderland will get an RMC hybrid or a Raptor within the next five years. In a five year timeline, we're talking about one edition, maybe two max. Will Canada's Wonderland get an RMC hybrid or a Raptor as their next edition? I would bet against it. It seems way more likely for them to get a launch looping coaster from Mock Rides, maybe Vacoma, maybe even B&M. Don't sleep on Canada's Wonderland getting a surf coaster. All eyes will be on SeaWorld Orlando as they open the first one next year. If that one is popular and reliable, I bet Cedar Fair brings one to the chain. Canada's Wonderland is their testing ground. They've been loading up with B&Ms, and they can use an extreme launch coaster. It's almost like a match made in heaven. Sigmund on YouTube. Magic Mountain replaces Viper with a B&M dive. Kind of piggybacking on the earlier question about Viper and Ninja. If Viper was the one that will bite the dust, is it realistic to assume that they would replace it with a B&M dive? I'm buying this. It's always been a great option for that plot of land, but we never believed that Six Flags would pay for it. Now that Fiesta Texas just got a B&M dive, it seems like a logical option. I think Magic Mountains would be over 200 feet. 
That would also help separate it from Emperor at SeaWorld. And it would be a fun, reliable, popular, high-capacity ride to replace the classic Viper. It makes sense to me. Master Watermelon Theme Parks. B&M stops making gigas. I'm selling this. Obviously, their only customer so far has been Cedar Fair. And unless Knott's gets one, I doubt they're going to buy one anywhere else. When it comes to American chains, Hershen has to be in the mix. SeaWorld has to be in the mix. There are plenty of parks that may be interested in Japan, or Europe, or even China. I would be stunned if, in 10 years, Orion stands as the last B&M Giga. Me neither. Alton Tower's Secret Weapon 9 will be manufactured by B&M. I'm buying this. I'm really not familiar with the rumors out there, or any work that may be in progress. But Alton Towers has done a lot of work with B&M in the past, and with the emergence of the new surf coaster. That seems to be a great option for a park with a strict height limit. Get a good launch with airtime moments and inversions. Kind of like Rita, but actually good. It could also be an SNS Access, or something from Tacoma, or some kind of water coaster, or maybe no coaster at all. But a surf makes so much sense, I gotta go that route. Land Tony. King's Dominion will replace Anaconda or Grizzly within the next five years. I agree that both these coasters need help, or a wrecking ball. King's Dominion has been cleaning house over the last several years. Hurler and Shockwave were planned to go, but Volcano really threw a wrench into their plans. Do they really want to take out more coasters faster than they can replace them? We got Tambili. We're still waiting on the big Volcano replacement, at least as of when I'm recording this. Maybe once that happens, they'll work on taking out the next ride deserving of the axe. If that doesn't happen within five years, it won't be much longer. I'm willing to buy this. I can't see either one going, but Anaconda's plot of land seems much more attractive. Maybe they remove Anaconda and use the side of the lake for Railblazer. I can see that happen. That's all for episode 8. If you have any thoughts on any of these topics, agree or disagree, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to leave your own idea for the next video, starting with the words by yourself. Before you go, if you can drop this video a like, I'd appreciate it. And if you're new here and love coasters, please consider giving me a sub. Also, check out my links below for my Discord server, and my second channel, where I post copyright-free off-ride footage, and my baseball channel, if you also happen to be a baseball fan. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.